And uh, welcome to the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission monthly meeting. Uh, if you all please stand and cite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, let me uh, start by introducing um, our commissioners. <coughs> to my left, uh, Rick Griffin, uh, representing the town of Hampton. Chuck Rage, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. We have Ann Marchand, our secretary. To my far right, Bob Preston, representing the Chamber of Commerce. Fran McMahon, representing Rockingham Planning Commission. Uh, Bill Watson, representing uh, Department of Transportation. Uh, excuse for uh, from this meeting tonight, Dean Merrill, who happens to be in Washington, and and Mike Hausman, uh, who's out on a college visit for, with one of his uh, children. We also have uh, Jason Bashant, the town planner, joining us tonight, as he has been now for the last couple of months. So thank you, Jason, for taking time out of your uh, your day. Okay, public comment. Um, is there any public comment? Hearing none, we do have an appointment. I received an email from Ed St. Pierre, who uh, was one of our Hamptonites that watched our TV program last month and know that we, uh, we started the, the discussion about the South Beach entrance into Hampton Beach and um, had some ideas uh, that he shared with me um, and I basically said it would be good for him to come to a meeting um, and share it with all the uh, commissioners. So, Ed, welcome. You want to come up to uh, the desk? Are you coming on your own or for the zoning board? No, no. I'm a, I'm a resident of the town. All right. I'm a concerned yeah. resident. How's that? Excellent. Um, basically, John caught my attention last meeting I was reviewing, and um, he mentioned the south gateway to the beach which is an area that I have done some work in in the past. Um, it's an area where I drive through every day um, in the morning and at night. So um, basically uh, some of the points. Um, it's um, This particular area would be a great um, project for you guys because you, you, you handle the cross-jurisdictional um, issues very well. In fact, you excel at it. Um, you know, bringing the parties together and, and, and getting things done. And uh, that was one of the things I realized real quickly down there when I was working down there, that um, you have uh, DOT area, you have port area, and I believe it's either, it's, I think it's a town, doesn't the town own the pump house or is it the precinct? <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure who owns the yeah. pump house. Yeah, and, 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 that, that, and it looks that way too. Yeah. Um, well, we'll get there. Um, basically, um, two years ago, I was granted permission through beautification um, to work with them uh, uh, from Gino Marconi to do some work down there. Um, we did the boat with the flowers. I placed the bench. Um, Kathy Silver uh, paid for the bench, uh, to, dedicated to the uh, Smith and Gilmore folks. Um, it was a nice little touch. Um, what I, I further tried to do down there was I was going to donate another bench, um, my mother's bench, um, and I had built a pad, but uh, kind of got into some uh, territorial issues down there, and I kind of backed off. That was a couple of years. In fact, there's a pad down there right now um, overlooking the harbor um, where the bench, and, and I, I may still put some out there. I got some, some stuff at the house. I just, I, I kind of had to walk away at the time. Um, so that's that. Um, basically, I have previously thought about that area, um, and um, I recently went down here the week after I, I heard John talk about it to do some more brainstorming. Um, I always envisioned some type of pocket park down there with a couple benches to re 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 uh, reflect, or actually what I call the three R's, rest, reflect, and recharge. Um, that's that's my my theme of benches with what you know by by resting and reflecting you recharge you know and that's what people come come to vacation or whatever for so um, 
The biggest thing I see down there is an educational opportunity in some in some manner. I mean, whether it's benches with um, like little signposts that tell you about the harbor, or they'll tell you about. Um, but you know, beyond that, we have to realize that that's probably going to be eventually the um, the bridge, the new bridge. So it's probably not anything permanent down there. You really you don't want to go too deep with it. Certainly, you know, benches or. Uh, I get a further idea, maybe some a little picnic area or something down there. But um, certainly, like the history of the harbor can be could be discussed. Um, the Underwood Bridge and how it was the the the, the longest uh, wooden bridge, you know, things like that. History, the um, fishing fleet, the different uh, parts of the dip, fishing fleet, and 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 you know their viability and how long they've been there, et cetera. You know, just as like little information boards. Um, um, f first of all, I, I, I could suggest some, um, some very simple things that can be done down there on the cheap. The first things that need to be done are, I think, that the stakeholders need to be um, prodded a little bit maybe. Let's say, um, you know, there's some Jersey barriers down there that are falling apart that look like uh, they've probably been there for 20 years. There's some telephone poles there that are unsightly. Uh, I know they're probably blocking access to um, cars from going across that or something. But also note that they do park overflow vehicles at, on some of those areas. Uh, so I found out when looking into bench sites. Um, so let's see. So easy things would be like clean, you know, get it cleaned up a little bit. Maybe I don't know. I know they get the rocks there for a reason, probably to protect. From vehicles uh, going errant, maybe um, you know. One of the things I was led to believe when I was down there two years ago, when the project was going on at the port, uh, was that they were potentially going to change out, or if they had some extra money, they would keep on going with the with the railings, because all those railings are all run down. The um, and 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 the, and the harbor looks great with with all the new railings and all the new pressure treated posts and everything. I mean. Some of that could be um, looked into. Um, most of the ideas I have are relative to colors. I mean, um, maybe the area can be, the grass can be um, treated a little bit or fertilized a little bit and made a little greener. I mean, it's usually like brown and overgrown in most of those areas down there. Um, like as I say, I go across it every day, you know, and it's the, the, the biggest unsightly thing down there is that pump house. Now, the least thing could be maybe a coat of paint, maybe some blue paint, some light blue paint, or some kind of, it's just really, <laughs> I mean, the roof, it needs a new roof, um, but it's got a nice little pergola on the top that could be really enhanced a little bit. I mean, it could, it could be, it now is very unsightly with a little bit of paint and a little bit of work, it could be, I understand that there's actually, because um, I had even thought about Another thing to be looking into is reuse, and I know they had talked about that with the um, ocean, the blue ocean people. I mean, that would be a great little um, sub area or whatever where they could go down and teach or uh, have you know students down to teach them about the harbor or about the the um, the it's not a building that can be used. I I know that because I I was you open up the door and it drops and down. It drops right down into these old pumps. It was yeah, a, it was I, I just day. found that out because John Gephardt had, I was talking to John last weekend, and he had gotten access at one time. Um, it's but nothing pretty. In he, then that's fine. But even on the outside, um, one of the thoughts I had was, you know, you got boarded up windows there. You could either get some kind of shutters, like, you know, cl closed shutters, build some kind of facade on there that looks like the shutter, you know, like a storm's coming or something, the shutters are closed, and paint them a nice green or a, an offset color and paint the building a different, you know, Add some color there, or Linda suggested um, some kind of mural. Make it into make the size of it murals, fishes, or and I have some some good ideas about like um, it's all about color. Bring some color down there. Um, certainly, um, let's see, you know, make the grass area more vibrant. Um, flowers in the ground, we know that works. I mean, as, as you got the like the A Street where they got those big planters. You could have those by the road maybe as a blockage for the cars as, as opposed to the telephone poles that are there. Um, you could build out a um, little flower box. And some of these things I could help you guys with or I could help whoever. I mean, I, I always 
to yeah. put my time to beautification when I can. I mean, we're working up in uh, trying to restore. Uh, to me. We're up at the um, the town beach there, up in uh, uh, Bicentennial Park right now. There, there was, they really was a mess up there, but we we went up last weekend and we're getting the boat fixed and we're trying to get. You know, I'm going to help them get some mulch and flowers and bring that area back. Um, we know flowers work. Flowers again, colors. Um, the pump house, the wooden, sh uh, wooden shutters, uh, roof, pergola. Um, I just see the whole place is lending itself to a possible educational opportunity. You know, even if you took three sides of that, and, and the other thing about the building, the doors that are on there are falling apart and are not even correct. Um, you know, little things like that that could be enhanced. I mean, I think right now it's just bolted up. It's not even, I don't even know if you can get in there. Um, but, um, you know, Storyboards on three sides of that. Talk, one talks about the harbor, one talks about the fishing fleet, one talks about the wooden bridge or whatever topic. Um, educational opportunity. Um, there's a little um, grassy knoll under on the side of the um, guardrails. Below is like a little hollow. Make a nice area for a little picnic area. Or maybe it needs a little sand or something to flatten out a couple spots. But um, you could get a couple picnic tables, two, four picnic tables in there. There's an overgrown tree. It looks like it's dead behind that pump house. I mean, there's just little things that could be done to that area, landscaping-wise, et cetera, you know. I mean, I had even sh mentioned shade trees and stuff, but that may be a problem because after, the, after that thought, I, I, I realized that eventually there may be a bridge there. So, you know, maybe that doesn't work. Um, but, you know, another real good idea I had you have that unitil cage, if you will. Must be some kind of pump station or something there for the gas. Um, maybe you could get them to plant some arborvitaes around that. Maybe you could do three sides of that, at least the front side and, and a little bit of each side, and you could build a planter in front of that, you know, a little wooden box, some flowers. Got your green, you know, there's your greens, there's your colors again. Green arborvitaes, colors, flowers. Um, I think that's what it needs. I think, you know. Even if, it's the, even if you can make the grass look a little better, that's a good start. Even if you could make, like, the Jersey barriers go away or something, you know, maybe if there needs to be some kind of guards there, that could be, you know, the, the, what they did at the harbor doesn't, isn't that bad. It's, it's a pretty common thing, the wooden um, pressure treated. Um, you know, to go further, I know um, in the past they've spoken about making, um, hey. making the... Um, the, the the state um, work sh work um, the, the garage there or whatever it is across the street into like a movie set. But my thoughts are even not even that you could have um, you know take about three two or three sheets of plywood, stand them up, put them together, paint it white, and let some of the artists come in and maybe make make a scene of either like a harbor um, like a typical view of of the the mouth of the river there, you know like a like the, the, the fishing fleet going, or the, the you know, the, the party boat going out with a, you know, a trawler behind, you know, like a common scene that I see in the morning when I'm going to work, you know, something like that. Or um, I saw, you know, I, I see like um, grays and blues and stuff, and there's a commercial on TV, Pacific Life, with two whales in the water, and it, this doesn't do it justice, but I do have it, the, the printer didn't work quite, I just thought pass that around just to, to envision what I'm talking about it but the commercial on my high definition TV is very much crisper than that it's got the mother and the baby wheel with the with the grays and the blues the light blues and the dark blues even I had one where I saw the wheel jumping out of the water where you get the sky again colors so I mean that's pretty much the presentation I have mm -hmm. um, any questions uh, I mean um, well, let me, uh, since we have this on the new business, and for Ed not to have to wait for that part of the, uh, the meeting to take place, why don't we just, I'll, I'm going to just move up to that new business so that we can have this further discussion uh, while Ed's here. Um, you know, just because I, I, oh, I'm sorry. But bear with me. I'm not here telling you guys what, what well, to do down <clears> there. I'm here to brainstorm and, yep. and to share because I, I mean I'm out there, and and I do some of this work out there. Yep. And I'm more than, I'm always more than willing to take on a good cause, um, to you know make the beach a little 
nice a place to, to come to. Well, first of all, thank you for, for taking time tonight to, to come out and talk with us. Um, you know, when I put this on the agenda last month, um, <clears throat> I was hoping that, you know, we could get some momentum because um, I would agree with you. Um, and, and that is that now that a lot of the business community down on Ocean Boulevard is starting to, to create new faces, um, that we now need to take a look at the entranceway um, because it, it really isn't uh, attractive for people that are coming into Hampton Beach from the south. Um, so and that's why I, I put it on the agenda last, last month. I'm glad that you picked, it up, picked up on that. Um, I think one of the things that you shared, Ed, with us, which, you know, as you were talking, I was just writing all of the, if you will, the stakeholders. And, you know, we've got about eight or nine stakeholders that could play a role in helping us uh, with, first of all, coming up with some creative ideas uh, of what we'd like to do, and, and not only in that median strip, if you will, but possibly even on the dread side you know, where the barn is, et cetera. Um, you know, <clears throat> I, I look at the Beach Commission as a, as a, a player, uh, maybe as a coordinator. Uh, the, the Village District, of course, uh, and probably through the uh, Beautification Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, the Port Authority, uh, just, you know, because it's part of their land. Uh, DOT, because it's part of their land. Mm -hmm. um, the town. Um, we got to figure out who's got well, the, well, who, who owns the, the, the water pumps. Yep. Um, Unitil, uh, because they have this little thing over there that, you know, is is an eyesore in some ways. Um, Blue Ocean, you mentioned, which I think could be a stakeholder if they bought into the idea of wanting to help, either in terms of just the planning stage, uh, in terms of thought process, uh, ideas, etc., or maybe even having some uh, long-term commitment in the, down in that area through education. Um, and then we got the, uh, we can't forget those, we have, we have about seven or eight little businesses down there that I think if uh, they would be willing to help and support us in some ways, uh, because what we're doing is dressing up in front of their storefronts um, in terms of anything that we do down there in terms of improvements. Um, so, I, I think a lot of the things that you have mentioned, um, one in terms of the cleanup part, the Jersey barriers, the telephone poles, the rocks and everything, um, <coughs> but in terms of really getting people around the table and saying, okay, this is what we would like to do in, term, in a very general way, um, now let's spend the next half hour, 45 minutes, uh, and just brainstorm. Who can do what? What, what do people suggest that we do? Uh, maybe we can get the, uh, the, uh, a Google map so we, we have something to look at as people are talking and describing some of their ideas of what they would like to do. Um, and um, get everybody there around the table to agree that we need to go from a idea stage to let's put something together stage. And then I know that when we had Gino here a couple of months ago, um, I raised the question with him about the land, and um, he was very uh, uh, open uh, to, to listen to any suggestions and thoughts. Uh, of course, he has a board of directors that he has to report up to, so he'd have to get the okay for that. And we have Mr. Watson here from DOT, so we have some influence there. Um, and then we have Mr. Rage, who is very influential down on the beach. Um, so saying that, um, what I would suggest that we do, and if you would help in this effort, um, and if it would be the consensus of the commission, uh, that we, we call a, a special meeting, uh, invite individuals from these organizations to come and have them uh, participate in what we would like to do as a general thing and then have people start coming up with some ideas and some thoughts. How, how would that sound to, first of all, the commissioners? Is that something that we uh, 
feel comfortable doing? I think he's 100% uh, correct, you know, when you go over that. And sometimes we're all in such a hurry to zip through there that we don't pay attention. But when you look at all those little businesses that are there now, and, and if you just went and bid off just a little bit, like working on the pump house, to change that, it would blend right in with all those other little buildings that are there. And then you're biting off, I think, just a small part, just working on that side. It seems like lots of times we're always after dread to go get spend some more of their money, but if you went and we did one side first, you know, I think that they might come along. You know, it, would, it would look much, much better. And, and you think about the people that are stuck in traffic. You know, we're zipping through there, but when you're sitting there waiting for the bridge to go up and you're, you say, well, look at that building. Look at the flowers. This place has really come a long way. I think we're doing ourselves and the whole beach a, you know, a, a good justice. Yep. So I think we should look into it. I think the other gateways of, of been over time approved a lot. I mean, you know, I know I know the precinct sponsors a lot of that. Um, the other gateway we're working on is is not in their territory, so that's getting a little, that's a little tougher. But I've I've told them that I'll step up to the plate for whatever donations they don't get to get that done. Um, it's things like that. It's you know you'd be surprised at the people, even the, the people in the community who who came out last weekend over at uh, Bicentennial Park. Uh, we cleaned that place up in no time. So, so you know, you, you also can't forget about the other stakeholders, the people that live here. Yep. And and you know, in in, um, in attending the annual meeting of the uh, village district, you know, the whole topic. And I don't know if this would even fit, but at least we need to put it on the table and say, does it fit? Uh, they talked about the Vietnam Memorial and where uh, where in the beach area. Would it be appropriate to put the memorial? So, and, and somebody was saying church down in the Church Street area. It's my understanding, it's the in, Church Street parking lot. Yeah, I've volunteered to help um, with some of the uh, setup on that. Also, I was talking to Uda yeah. a couple weeks ago. She has my support on that. Also, yeah, that's that's my understanding. But you know, and that that, that might be the best place to do it. But I'm thinking that. Maybe if there's a, and I, I don't know all of the requirements and regulations because I guess they're very strict in terms of how you set it up and the boundary lines and, and all of that stuff. It's got to be set on gravel and I just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think back. I think it's got to be on the gravel. It couldn't be on the sidewalks and that's why they didn't go after the, um, the sidewalk and, you know, after the bandstand or something, you know, yep. be on the bandstand or something. I think that was my understanding. Okay. Had to be um, certain, and there was something about they're going to have to landscape it and stuff. And that's where I'm. I volunteered if they need yeah. some help. Um, there's a certain criteria that they have for that. Uh, but that you you are right. That would be a good location. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, maybe not the on the media, maybe, maybe not on the median strip area, but <coughs> on the dread side of of Route One. Uh, of, 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 yeah, Route 1, 1A, um, because then p if people wanted to pull in and, and, and park and, and take a look at it, they just pull right into the state park and then walk all along the, where where the uh, the barn is, mm -hmm. somewhere in that area. I, I, don't, I don't know. And, and maybe Church Street has been decided, but I think we should at least, you know, approach Uder and, and others that are involved and say, hey, you know, what about this idea? Uh, so, I think we should just add that to the uh, to the potential of what some of the things we could do down there. So, yeah, I'm all, I'm all for that um, memorial coming here. Okay, and I think they have a lot to do with it. Yeah, um, certainly they've stepped up to the plate. Yeah. Chuck? I think this meeting we should do a uh, not an actual. I think we should do more of a field trip type meeting where we're walking through that whole area mm -hmm. and people uh, talking amongst each other in a, in a group. I think when you're sitting there trying to talk about this building and that building, it gets a little confusing what you're talking about. But if you're right, if you're walking through that little park area, you can say, that building there, let's do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Or we could do that over there across the street. I think it would be better to have like a, a field trip type meeting. Okay. I could see that pop house being, being done on a volunteer effort even, but it's just, I know that the town is touchy about it's their property or whatever that they don't like. I mean, certainly it's not the grist mill, um, 
and, and I don't think it would require any kind of not the town's property. Cost. I think it's the Port Authority's property. It's the Port Authority's property, right? I think so. Yeah, I think it's Port. But and but the house and the and the water pumps is the question of who owns the actual pumps well, inside. The pumps I was told by Vic Lassad that he bought those pumps. Yeah, I was told that too. I thought he was trying to buy them years ago. And my answer to him was, get them out. <laughs> uh, and this was a long time ago. Um, so I don't know what, I don't, I don't know. It's before my time, so. Um, but the building itself is not in good shape. So I'm I don't sure know if the water out the company condition. owned the building and we maintained the pumps. The village district maintained the pumps. I, I don't know who built the building. It's, I, 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 we've looked, we've gone through books, we've looked at history things can't find anything about it, so I don't know. And when we went to figure out who owned it, everybody said, well, not me, not me, not me, not me. We had everybody there because uh, no one wanted to deal with it, so I jumped on the not me bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> well, my understanding is that had something to do with the fire suppression at one time? It was, yeah. And that that's therefore tied into the precinct? That's The precinct owned the pumps at one time. And the water co and it had to do with the hydrants and the water company. So the, the question was, did the water company build the building or own the building? And one of the reasons being was is there was a tank underneath that after a storm became exposed, and they weren't sure if there was oil or any, any type of uh, hazardous waste in that tank. So that's when everybody said, not me. <laughs> The cleanup, and then I guess it turned out there was nothing in it anyway, so we were all fine. A so couple of rollers and a couple of square shingles, and yeah. maybe okay. a couple of pieces of plywood. I don't know. Yeah. I, I know I could get that roof done. That's that's not a big roof, and I, I really looked at that pergola. That pergola is nice. I mean, you could really like accent that, you know, if not with copper or something with colors. Yeah. Pick a date, John. Offset. All right. Why don't we um, we'll, we'll pick a date in May. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking um, to tie in with uh, the DREAD uh, operational meeting, which is on the 16th, um, and it'll be right down the beach, and probably some of the same players would be attending that meeting. Um, maybe we can have a uh, break from that meeting at the end and then head over to the, uh, to the area in question um, and just have people walk walk through and as Chuck su suggested maybe we can just set up a couple of folding chairs or something or in, in, in ta tables and just sit there, sit right there and just kind of be there and look um, so why don't we tentatively plan on May 16th uh, but I'll do a, a, a quick survey of these other organizations to see if they would be able to participate um, and then we'll um, I'll get back to you Ed and then if you can help me coordinate the that that activity, okay? Yeah, um, you're talking, is that a Saturday, you yeah. think you said? Because I'm, I'm really out of town during the day, so. Okay. Uh, but I, it doesn't mean that I can't make arrangements to be here anyways. I'm, uh, I'm willing to um, participate, how about that? Okay. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll also get a, a consensus from the other different individuals in these other stakeholders and, and um, you know, I'll see what their availability is, but I'll, I'll, I'll work on getting a, a mutual date. Mm -hmm. I'll get back to you. That's fine. Okay. okay. Good. Do you have to know what time that meeting starts? Nine o'clock. Thank you. Nine o'clock. So, okay, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You guys do good good work. I, I, I do uh, view what I can. <laughs> thank you. Actually, I used, to film, I used to film you guys. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's how I get my start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. Um, once again, Ann has done a, a great job in, in minutes. So let's take a look at the, first of all, the special meeting uh, that was held on March 26th. That was the meeting with regard to the transportation grant um, where we received a progress report from William Rose and Gordon Levy. Um, page one, page two. Page three, page four, 
Hearing no edits, uh, I'll entertain a motion um, to accept the uh, the minutes of uh, March 26th, the 5 o'clock transportation grant progress report meeting. Do I have a motion? Mr. McMahon made a motion. No second. Mr. Rage, second. I know Mr. Person will have to abstain because he was uh, at another meeting. Uh, so all in favor? Opposed? Okay, approved. Next meeting, same evening, 7 o'clock, our monthly uh, meeting. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. And page six. I believe everybody was there at that meeting, so I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes uh, of our monthly meeting in, in March. Motion made by Mr. Rage, second by Mr. Preston. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Do you want the special meeting on the website? Yes. The note you want on yes. the website? Yeah. Okay. That'll be appropriate, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Chairman's report. Um, the, uh, as you remember, there was a discussion about the Rockingham Planning Commission was having an upcoming uh, public hearing on the 10-year uh, plan, and it had at least looked like um, our Ocean Boulevard project was kind of being downgraded and, 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 and not in, in the plan. Uh, so I attended the uh, public hearing to get clarification, and Fran was there also. Um, and apparently, the Rocky and Planning Commission um, wasn't intending to take uh, the Ocean Boulevard project off the 10-year plan. Um, they kept on sh sharing at the, at the meeting that, no, the, the Ocean Boulevard project is, in fact, still in the plan. Um, and we were, you know, highlighting that it was it's important, but wasn't actually on their list of projects that they were presenting to DOT. So uh, both Cliff Senate and Dave Walker uh, reconfirmed that as far as they believe is that we haven't lost any ground um, with uh, the 10 year plan. It would be our prerogative if we wanted to go and request uh, a next stage where there would be some construction money set aside uh, based on the progress that we're making with the transportation grant this year. Um, along with the quarter of a million dollars that is already in uh, the transportation grant <coughs> uh, uh, transportation plan uh, for further engineering design detail type of work. Um, so I left the meeting feeling comfortable that by the time the final report goes from Rockingham Planning Commission to uh, DOT, that there is this kind of clarification, and wherever it suggested that Ocean Boulevard was uh, not being recommended, to, <coughs> that that would be taken out, taken out of the report. And uh, if anything, to highlight that the Ocean Boulevard project was still important, uh, etc. Um, that's Fran. That's what I got. I mean, maybe you. Yeah, I, I think I need to go. A little beyond that, uh, I have to compliment the chairman uh, on the outstanding job he did, um, not only explaining to the commission, you know, what the intent of, you know, what's going on at the beach over the last number of years is and has been. Um, John clearly indicated that the issue of the 10-year plan was really moot. Uh, it was... Uh, an error, basically, 
But beyond that, uh, he had members of the commission ready to send letters of endorsement to Washington for the uh, for the uh, reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard. So I, I I have to compliment him on that of doing a terrific job, not only of you know clarifying the the error, but going well beyond that and uh, uh, carrying the banner of the of this uh, commission very well. So thank you. Okay. Um, one one of the things that, that, that which I think caused some confusion was a section of the report that moved Ocean Boulevard project out into 2026 or 27, which automatically would have taken taken us out of the 10-year plan. Um, they admitted. Um, publicly that that was a mistake. Uh, they erred on that and it should have never been and that they would make sure that that would be rectified before the final report went to, to DOT. <coughs> so um, we did our part making sure that we uh, kept Ocean Boulevard in, in the uh, front burner, if you will, um, and then maybe if, because I always like to put Bill on the spot, um, maybe just kind of brief the commission on what happens now. I mean, so they had the public hearing. They, they approved uh, the plan going forward with making sure that they were going to correct certain areas. What happens now, Bill? So um, we're waiting to receive nine sets of priorities from the nine regional planning commissions. And um, we'll be interested to see how Rockingham present their, their projects. For projects that were already in the 10-year plan that they feel that there is sufficient funding for, sufficient representation for, we will um, not touch those projects. For projects that were not part of the 10-year plan, if there are any that Rockingham Planning Commission and their, their policy committee is recommending be added, um, Rockingham will have prioritized those within a, um, an allocation or a theoret theoretical budget that the department provided. And we'll take those recommendations from Rockingham, and it's a, probably be a very short list of new projects, along with eight other short lists. And the similar tool that we used here with William many months ago, the tool called Decision Lens, um, the department staff will be taking the nine sets of recommendations with the same criteria that the planning commissions are aware of that we'll be using to evaluate those projects and evaluate nine sets of projects against each other. And out of that will come a priority list that we'll present to the commissioner's office for their consideration to add to the 10-year plan. Mm -hmm. If we feel that there's truly funding available based on the federal revenue that we see happening or not happening, uh, so here's my plug. Congress um, needs to act before the end of May. Our ability to spend money runs out at the end of May. And cash in the Federal Highway Trust Fund, uh, we're expected to go broke sometime in July or August, unless there's additional revenue and additional actions taken by Congress. So our 10-year plan is based on that, that federal revenue. And um, it, it it somewhat depends on what comes out of the state budget process. Uh, we just met with Senate Finance uh, yesterday for the first time officially uh, through a public hearing, and we wait to see what the, the budget process does to the department, whether there's uh, the opportunity for additional state revenue uh, to help match some of the federal mon funds we monies we receive, or if there's um, <coughs> further cuts, as it happened in the House side of the budget process. So the goal is to take those those nine recommendations, come up with a prioritized list, and as funding allows, uh, try to, to add um, projects to represent all other regions based on their priority <coughs> to the draft 10-year plan. Okay. So hypothetically, if, if we even wanted to push further um, and get construction money earmarked so that if and when we apply for TIGER, we get the federal money we already have already in the 10-year plan, the, the match money. Um, can, for example, the Executive Council in Rockingham County, Chris Nunu, 
um, after getting it going through DOT, do they have the ability to amend the plan to add or delete from your then recommended plan to the executive council? Absolutely. So he he would he would be in a position where legally he could say, I want to amend the 10-year plan submitted by DOT to add um, X millions of dollars to Ocean Boulevard yep. under the term construction. Yeah, and, and quite honestly, usually Councillor Sununu does. And what he does is he tries to balance. So if he's going to add, yep. recognizing that <coughs> revenues are tight, he finds a place somewhere else in a 10-year plan to say, you know, this uh, Hampton Ocean Boulevard is ready. Let's add it. Town B, I'm sorry, but I'm not hearing a support for your project, and I don't think it's ready for prime time yet. Let's pull that one back for now, and um, so that we try to balance the budget per yeah. se. Okay. Okay. Any questions, either of me or, or Bill, on this? Okay. Should we send a letter to uh, Chris from the Beach Commission? Is that something that we'd want to do? Yep. Yeah. And when it comes time later this summer, early fall, when um, we'll be working with the council to set up public hearings throughout the state, um, I would recommend that the Beach Commission have a say at those hearings. Uh, we usually try to do a couple. Chris has, in the past, has tried to do a couple down in this region. Maybe to put it on his radar screen, maybe we go with Mr. Preston's recommendation and just have the uh, chairman be authorized to uh, write a letter yep. to uh, reemphasize the importance of this project being moved along. So uh, do I have a second to Mr. Preston's motion? Mr. Griffin, second. Any further discussion? The motion is to authorize the chairman to write a letter to Executive Council Chris Nudo and to ask for his support in, in providing additional funds through the 10-year plan under the uh, term con uh, construction money. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Um, talking about transportation and Tiger Grant, um, I have been getting a, a whole bunch of notices, um, invites to the uh, to webinars to learn more about uh, the Tiger Grant because it's now they're coming up again this year for more funding. Um, I've had a couple of conversations with, with Bill to get counsel uh, on whether or not we should hold off at least for one year and do a big push next year uh, because we're assuming that the Tiger Grant will also be around next year because we will have a whole lot more work done uh, on the present grant that we have with Federal Highway. Um, and that it would be probably more suitable for us to look at um, applying for next year, which would be then 2016, which timing-wise, we know that Ocean Boulevard reconstruction probably because of all of the paperwork, even if we had grant money today sitting on the table today, we're probably talking two or three years out. So I think um, we should um, keep the Tiger Grant um, in mind, learn as much as we can about it, but to not to officially apply for it until uh, next year, 2016. You agree on that, Mr. Absolutely. Wilson? Okay. Um, and then uh, just one other little uh, thing that I wanted to make sure I kept on the agenda until we found one way or the other. Um, still waiting for Dread to uh, give us their recommendation on parking exceptions for special New Hampshire plates uh, during the school year, during the weekday, uh, for individuals to be able to park um, for free. So um, I'll keep it on the agenda until we hear from Dread one way or the other. That's it for me for the report. Um, Mike Hausman sent me an email knowing that he was not going to be here and he, to let me know two things. One, um, 
that there's no change to the treasurer's report. So as of this meeting, we still have $16,499.43 in our, our account. Um, and then the second thing um, that he wanted just to make sure that I reminded the commissioners and also those that are watching on TV that the, uh, the Dread and Hampton Community public meeting uh, about the operational uh, updates for Dread and the State Park uh, will take place on May 16th at 9 o'clock in the morning uh, upstairs on top of the seashell uh, stage. And um, he has asked the Beach Commission once again to uh, host it for them, and I have agreed to do that. Mr. Watson, any any updates on the transportation grant uh, for Mr. Uh, William Rose? So just a couple of things. Uh, one is more on the operational side of what we have to do, and a couple on the, of the project itself. Uh, on the operational side, I think after or during the last month's meeting, John came around to us and had us check to make sure that our time that we have spent towards the transportation grant is accurate. Uh, if you haven't, if if you don't recall, or if you need to review it, please let us know. Um, one of the things that we have to do, <coughs> we DOT has to do on behalf of the Beach Commission, is report out to ourselves on at least a quarterly basis about how much of our time we are spending on the project. Uh, the purpose of that is if. If everybody doesn't remember, we received 300000 in federal dollars with a 20% match requirement, so $75,000 in match value required. And the way that we proposed that match was through our volunteer efforts, uh, somewhat modified and whittled down by what our Federal Highway Administration Office here in New Hampshire allowed for. Um, and so when we got that approval from Federal Highway, uh, one of the things that we had to commit to do was track things on a monthly basis, but quarterly review how we were tracking our time against uh, VHBs or other expenses on the project. And so William is, is working on that right now. Um, as we would expect, we're tracking a little behind in our time versus what VHB is spending. And that's really because they've been doing a lot of behind the scenes data, data collection and data crunching over the last few months. And um, our first opportunity to see that was here last month. Um, and we know that there'll be a lot more opportunity in the, in the near future to, to get more involved with them. And so from William's perspective, we're, we're doing fine. Um, we need to share that information with Federal Highway, stated as such, if, if this commission feels comfortable with that. Um, so that's that's one thing that, that we're working on. Uh, we have received the draft existing conditions report from VHB. I think it was in really sketchy form. Uh, Gordon was talking about still had a couple of items to <coughs> up last month. Uh, William plans on, on sharing that with all of us. I haven't seen it either. Uh, once he gets a chance to look through it, and he hopes to finish that up next week. And he's been working with Gordon at BHB to try to finalize. Um, it looks like the, the last week in May is a good week for the first public meeting, um, but still trying to finalize the meeting space and, and, and the staff that Gordon wants available from his office at that meeting. Um, and on Monday, we expect to receive a social media plan from him, both for that public meeting and for their overall um, um, marketing outreach type efforts for, for the first meeting, but also um, to show us what they, they would propose doing for the entire project. So once William has you know, received that and had a first glance at it, he'll share that with us as, as well. One of the action items that um, we need to do tonight um, for the uh, for the minutes to be recorded that um, the what I have passed out covers um, four meetings that we have had since November, where the transportation grant has been discussed. 
Um, just to very quickly review, um, we were given uh, hourly rates, if you will, in terms of our time, and then hourly rates of anybody from the town. Um, and so we've applied those rates, uh, multiplied them by the time spent for each meeting. Um, and um, since it does cover travel, um, I incorporated more time for Mr. Watts and Mr. Hausman because of their travel back and forth from, from Concord. Um, we also um, are able to bill out um, Jason's time, Ann's time, and, and also meeting space fees from the town of Hampton. So as you can see, um, these four meetings are all broken down, and as of April 1st, uh, we're contributing as in-kind $1,664.30. So I'd like to have a motion uh, from somebody um, approving uh, this report uh, so that we can have it in our minutes. I'll make that motion. Mr. Griffin, do I have a second? Mr. Preston, second? Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, that's it for old business for me. Anybody have any old business? Hearing none, new business. We've already talked about the South Beach entranceway. Any other new business? I do have one thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to mention, I thought it would be of interest to the commission. Um, the planning board is forming a zoning review subcommittee. Um, we did issue... Uh, a press release has been, has been issued this week, and it's also posted on our website requesting letters of interest from the public on that. So for the commission members and anybody listening from the public, um, those letters of interest are due in the planning office by Tuesday, May 5th, and then at our meeting on the 6th, we'll discuss appointments to fill those, those roles. Um, the purpose of this is to look at um, zoning and current in areas of towns as best uses in certain areas of town, selected areas. We have two areas that we receive study requests for. One of those areas is down in the Hampton Beach area west of Ashworth Avenue, the rezoning of the RB area west of Ashworth Avenue to business seasonal. So that's one of the two items that this uh, subcommittee would take up immediately. Um, and I just want to bring that to the commission's attention. Should anybody be interested in being a part of that or just attending those meetings as well? Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other? Chuck. I went to a meeting the other day. I, I, I talked to uh, Les Eastman. He came to uh, the Hampton Beach Village District meeting. I was talking to Mark and Tracy Godfrey. They uh, own um, boats, charter boats out of uh, Seabrook Harbor. They've, an organization that has been started is the Gulf of Maine Charter and Recreational Fishing Association. Um, Chris Munns moderated this meeting the other day that I went to. And Senator Stiles was there, Senator Martha Fuller Clark was there. Representative Cushing and Representative Abrams. Is it Abrams from Seabrook? Yeah. Abramson. Abramson, all right. And then they <coughs> also had um, someone from Senator Ayotte's office, Senator Shaheen's office, and, Senator, and uh, Congressman Ginter's office there. This, this is, amazes me that these people who are running their business down there don't know, as of May, they don't know, they're not going to be told until the end of this month, whether they can fish with a rod and reel and run their business. The, envir the environmentalists are saying that there's, there's, they can't catch cod, they can't catch haddock, they can't. So they, these, these business people that are out there with rod and reels, not netting millions of fish, they're pulling one fish up at a time, can't run their business. They can't take reservations for charters. They can't, uh, the hotels that have people from upstate New York, Rhode Island, Connecticut, that come all over to fish uh, coast, can't, they, they can't make reservations because they don't know if they can go fishing. The, the, the bait store or the, the little convenience store that sells bait can't, they can't go out and fish off the, off the, um, the bridge or off the beach. So this, this is a serious issue for our businesses, the local fishermen in, in, in Hampton, all the way up through Maine, down to Massachusetts. And uh, I don't know, they, they've started this association, and you can join for as little as $25. 
uh, there's there's business fees, there's people that have um, the charter boats. I think their their uh, dues are like twenty five hundred dollars. But a, a guy that goes out and wants to throw his reel, if they want to help this this association for twenty five dollars, they can join this. And the reason we they need people to join this is because they've hired a lobbyist to go to Washington and help them stay in business. So I, I think it's something that I just want people in the audience to know on TV to understand that this is something the Seacoast should get behind, Hampton Beach should get behind, everybody in the area should get behind. That kind of had a funny website name. Do you know? It's G-O-M-C-R-F-A. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for it now, but... They're going to work on that. Uh, oh, here it is. G-O-M-C-R-F-A dot com. And it, it will lay out, you know, part of the problem. But if you're inclined to want to make a contribution to help these people, which are, they're all part of our community, you know, when you look at who they are and what they do, you but know. this is this affects the little restaurants, the breakfast yeah. people Everybody. go to breakfast. Yeah, uh, Charlie was there. Wasn't the they crowd were amazed? Hotels, there, hotels, hotels, any any business within a mile. But it, it was it was at the academy. Wasn't the crowd great? I mean, and, and you know, and you get some of these guys. They're pretty uh, passionate about their fishing. Uh, that never would go to a meeting in their life, and they're out there, and they're, they're pounding their fists on the table. They're, they're frustrated, so. Yeah, I don't play Yeah. <coughs> this is one other thing, too, Chuck, was that thing. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., the Wayne Library, That's I think right. Frank Ginter is going to be there himself. And the only thing to be discussed is this fishing thing. So I'm pretty sure that it's tomorrow morning, Friday at 9 is what I recall. The congressman is supposed to be there himself, and the subject is only on the fishing. So his representative said the other night. Okay. Okay. Any other new business, Mr. Preston? Just one more. It doesn't really uh, affect us, but we were out last night at an experienced Hampton meeting, and uh, we were talking to um, Jim McGruder. He's uh, over at Foss Manufacturing. Foss is maybe one of the biggest employees, employers in the town of Hampton. They're really good jobs. He was saying he was looking to hire 25 people, preferably veterans. He's got jobs available over there, so if somebody's interested in looking, they should stop by and get an application. Seems to be a lot of people looking for, for help. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good place good. to work. Yeah. Okay. Any other new business? Hearing none, I'll uh, entertain <coughs> a, a motion to adjourn, uh, but before I do that, Next meeting, because of the holiday, um, we scheduled our meeting for the 21st of May rather than the 28th. Um, so our next meeting will be May 20, 21st, um, hopefully here at the Town Hall Selectman Room. But we'll send out a notice uh, of uh, location once we find out. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Preston, Mr. Ray, second. All in favor, aye. Thank you. Channel 22, thank you very much.